Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Angela and today we're going to be doing a video on exclusively pumping. You will have all of the best tips that you need to get the best milk supply possible and to avoid things that tend to get your milk down. You are going to be more than ready to pump exclusively for your baby. These are all of the tips that helped me with my pumping journey and I know that these have helped thousands and thousands of other moms. But let's just get into it. I've been exclusively pumping for my son for a little over a year now. Even after a year, baby can definitely still get nutrients and vitamins and all of the goodness from your breast milk. First off, my number one tip is to make sure that you have the right type of pump. There are many different pumps out there and this is a mistake that I made that I wish I had figured out before buying my pump. This is one type of pump. I'm sure this is the type of pump that many women are aware of and this is a manual hand pump. So if this one is exactly how the name says, you manually pump with your hand. This is the Medela and they have the letdown phase over here. So letdown is when you are pumping quickly to get your milk flowing. So usually this is for about two to three minutes. You go in with slower but longer pulls, which will continue getting your milk out. You have the flange, which attaches like that. This one is a hit or miss for many women. Some women swear by it and they absolutely love it and they say that they will never use another pump except this one. And then there are other women who hate it and it does nothing for them. So unfortunately I was one of those women that I gave this a go and it just honestly did not work for me. I don't know if it was because my body was just used to using a double electric pump that a manual pump just didn't do anything I got out maybe a tiny bit of milk where with my double electric I can fill a whole bottle so if this for me didn't work I do still keep it on hand as a backup just in case it could work for you so you may want to give it a try they are more affordable than electric pumps so you could always buy one and have one as a backup like I do this right here is the pump that I use. This is my favorite pump. I love this one. It is from Lansino. And this is the double electric pump, hospital grade. And hospital grade means that it is strong enough where it is going to one, last a very long time for you to be able to exclusively pump. And it also has a very strong suction to get that milk flowing. You get better output and your milk supply becomes stronger and more efficient with hospital grade pumps. Now, the only thing I will say about the Lansino is I switched out the flanges for the ones from Medela. I do love that the Lansino has that rubber part on the outside. It makes it more comfortable and softer to wear but they do come a little bigger. Medela comes in 24 millimeters and the Lansino was, I believe it was 25. It may not seem like that much of a difference, but for pumping, little millimeters like that really do make a difference, especially for your milk supply. So I switched out my Lansino flanges and I just use my Lansino pump with the Medela flanges. Which brings me to a very important point, which is make sure that you get sized for your flanges. Pumps typically come with one size, which is usually the 24 millimeter, but not every woman is the same. Look at pictures that will show you exactly what the flange is supposed to look like on you. So you know if it's too big or too small, should you go up a size, down a size. You can buy some sizing kits off of Amazon so you can size yourself and try to figure out where to go from there. Another pump that I love that is hospital grade is the Spectra. They have two Spectras. Both work really well. 
and I know those are much easier to get in the US, so definitely look into those. Wearable pumps. I don't recommend wearing wearable pumps like the Mom Cozy or the Willow. I don't recommend wearing those before the first 12 weeks because at the 12 week mark, before the 12 weeks, that is when your milk is regulating. You really wanna be on a tight, persistent schedule of removing milk in order for your body to regulate the milk that you are going to further need for baby throughout the first year of life or second year if you choose to continue breastfeeding for that long. Wearable pumps are exactly what the name is. So you wear them and you aren't attached to a wall like you typically are for a double electric pump. Is that convenient? Definitely, because you aren't attached to a wall, so you don't have to sit in a corner, especially if you are taking care of other children or you can wear them at work, and that is a definite plus. But like I said, steer away from going to those before the 12 weeks. You can definitely wear them after the 12 weeks once your milk is regulated. So like that, you don't have to worry about dropping your supply and drying up. They just aren't as strong. Wearable pumps aren't hospital grade. You really want to get a strong, efficient pump that is going to give you the best milk supply possible. And looking into something called flange inserts and they are little inserts that you put inside of the flange and they are meant to make pumping more comfortable. So if you're noticing that you are getting a lot of cracking or even open wounds, if pumping is feeling very difficult and painful, then try an insert. They are known to help many women and to relieve their discomfort. Now, remember that pumping is not meant to be painful at all. It's supposed to be comfortable and barely feel like anything is happening. So if it is painful, then something is wrong. And I would definitely look into the two top reasons, which is flange size, like we spoke about. Look at your pump features. So maybe your level on your pump is too high, so bring it down a little bit. Just play around with your pump and see what works best for you. Now, this is a big tip, and I feel like this is back and forth between many women and i just genuinely feel horrible for women who i've heard that run to these things and then their milk dries up i just feel so horrible for them one of the number one things that i want to emphasize here is be careful about lactation foods snacks cookies brownies, drinks, any food that is specifically marketed as, as lactation foods, something that says it's going to up your milk supply, I would be very cautious about those. Some women say that they have eaten lactation cookies and they've been great, but because there is such a high risk with these foods, you really don't know everything that the companies are putting in there. And even sometimes with ingredients that are meant to help you, they actually do the opposite for some women, especially because during breastfeeding, your body is just going through so many different hormones and changes. One of the ingredients to look out for is fenugreek. Fenugreek is actually in a lot of lactation foods and it's said to up your milk supply, but I have heard from many, many moms, majority of them say that fenugreek made them dry up. So they went from producing maybe an average amount of milk and they wanted to up their supply and they took, they ate something with fenugreek in it and then immediately their supply tanked. They either took a really long time to rebuild their milk supply or they had to completely stop breastfeeding. Fenugreek definitely has mixed reviews. I would 
steer clear of it just to be on the safe side, especially if you have a more sensitive body or if you're currently pumping or breastfeeding and you're noticing that your body is a little sensitive to different changes in the environment or things that you eat, then definitely no fenugreek. No, 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 no. Another thing to be careful about is peppermint. For some women, it affects them and some women, it doesn't. For me, I have had peppermint chocolate during my breastfeeding journey and it didn't affect me. But then again, I was just eating little chocolates. I'm not really sure how much peppermint was actually in there. Just be careful about it because I have heard from some moms that peppermint also made their milk drop. Another ingredient is something called, I really hope I'm saying this right, it is soy lecithin. This is an ingredient that is meant to make your milk thinner and run quicker. If you have really thick milk or if your ducts tend to kind of like clog up, then soy lecithin is meant to unclog your duct and get that milk going, going, going. You'll actually find this ingredient in a lot of foods, especially chocolate and specifically Oreos. Oreo cookies are a favorite among pumping moms and I've had them and I can attest to the fact that every time I eat Oreos, I immediately feel my milk supply go up. It definitely does work and it's definitely a fun way to help your milk supply by eating Oreos. Who wouldn't love that? My favorite way to eat Oreos is to have it in vanilla ice cream. It's delicious and it helps with your milk so it's a win when I do want to say to be careful because if you do tend to have clogged ducts then more milk flowing can actually clog your ducts. So you can get blocked milk if your milk is flowing too quickly. So if you're having too much of this ingredient, then I would just be careful about that. Oatmeal. Oats are said to really help with your milk. So anything with oats, oatmeal cookies, straight oatmeal. I personally am not a fan of oatmeal as a breakfast food. So I was trying it in oatmeal cookies. I'm going to say that I didn't really notice too much of a difference, but that could have been my fault because the cookies that I got didn't have too much actual real oats in the ingredients. It's much safer than buying products that you don't know what the manufacturer has put in there. You want to also up your calories. You want to be eating more than what you did through your pregnancy or what you normally eat. The more calories you eat, the more milk you're going to make and eat healthy foods and also stay hydrated. This is a definite is to stay hydrated. So you need to have water by your side drinking from the morning to night and again, morning to night 24 seven. You wanna be making sure that your body is having enough hydration so that it can continue making that milk for baby. Let's talk about how much to pump. This is something that so many women get wrong, especially lactation consultants. Most of them are not specializing in exclusively pumping yet. Lactation consultants, for the most part, not all of them, but most of them, they specialize in nursing. Most of them will actually tell you that you can't exclusively pump and that it won't work and that is just a flat out lie because I am living proof that you can. Thousands upon thousands of other women are living proof as well. My lactation consultant at the hospital when our son was born, she gave me the advice to pump for 10 minutes. And I went with her advice because I didn't know any better at the time. And I was getting such little milk, but I thought that it was normal until I researched and I spoke to other pumping moms and I found out that that is a no-no. You need to be pumping around the clock every two hours, especially until those 12 weeks. I know that it is a very big struggle. It's very difficult. We love our sleep. You're already sleep deprived from baby and any chance that they're sleeping. You also want to sleep. I get it. It's hard, 
but at the end of the day i promise you if you stick to it if you stick to a pumping schedule of every two hours maybe every two and a half if that extra half hour helps you i promise you you are going to thank yourself and be so happy at the end of those 12 weeks your milk is regulated and you no longer really have to worry about what to eat and how much to pump and how often to pump and all of that once your milk regulates your pumping journey is a lot more lenient and it's easier but you have to make it until those 12 weeks so when baby's born up until milk regulation you want to be strict set a strict schedule of pumping around the clock every two hours definitely in the middle of the night you don't want to be missing that middle of the night pump especially because between the hours of about two and five o'clock a.m that is when your body is producing a specific hormone that ups your milk supply and really tells your body okay we need to continue making more milk for my baby. You're probably wondering if I don't pump for 10 minutes, then what is the appropriate time? And depending on your pump, most women I'm gonna say pump an average of 35 to 40 minutes. Some women can get away with 30 minutes. Some women have to actually go until 50 minutes, but I'm gonna say on the average, most moms is 35 to 40 minutes. And that is exactly what I have done through my journey. For the first six months of our son's life, I was mainly doing 40 minutes every single pump. As he got a little older, after the six month mark, I started bringing it down to 35 minutes and that is currently what I'm at. So I typically do a session of 30, 30 sometimes, 35 minutes mostly. One pump a day, I will go until 40. If I've had a day where I've been pumping for 30 minutes, then I'll add in that one 40 minutes to kind of help a little bit. You want to at least try to get two letdowns in one session. So in the middle of the pump, you're pumping for 40 minutes, at 20 minutes, hit the letdown mode again. So on my land snow, this is the letdown mode. So this is the on button. And this button right here is the letdown. So when I hit this button, it will pump quicker and get my milk flowing. It empties you out quicker and it lets your body know, continue making more milk. You have to remember that pumping and breastfeeding in general is all about supply and demand. Supply and demand. You remove milk, your body makes more. Remove milk, make more. It sounds like you're doing the opposite. You may think if I keep milk in, then I'm gonna have more milk instead of removing milk, but no, it's the opposite. You're removing milk, you're telling your body, baby needs this, continue making more. Something else you could try is massaging and shaking before pumping. Massaging, you can do before and during pumping, just doing like slow circular motions, not too rough. You don't wanna to go too deep into the tissue, but just enough where you are helping the milk to flow, especially if you tend to get clogged milk ducts. There are a lot of moms that actually shaking, like kind of dancing helps the milk to flow as well. I know that sounds silly, but give it a try in your bathroom alone. I guarantee you'll see a difference. What about clothes? You don't want to wear clothes that is too tight. Tight clothes, you definitely do not want to wear those, especially bras. If you have underwire bras, you don't want to wear those if you are pumping or breastfeeding because that can block off the circulation and apply unnecessary pressure, which will then cause blocked milk ducts and then can lead to mastitis which is not fun tight bras underwire get those out and just get something soft and comfortable preferably a cotton bra same with tight tops you don't want to be wearing things like that anything that is loose fitting is going to be better for you need to be doing a lot of skin to skin with baby especially in those early weeks 
skin to skin and just being near your baby, smelling them, kissing them, looking at them, all of that is also going to help your milk flow. Power pumping and cluster pumping. If you've been having a hard time with your milk supply and let's say you've tried everything, you've tried the oatmeal, you've been pumping for 40 minutes, you're pumping around the clock every two hours and nothing seems to make your milk increase, and that is where power pumping comes in. For the full pumping session, you are going to time different pumps. So you're going to pump for a certain amount of time, then you stop the timer, wait a certain amount of time, then pump again, stop, then pump again. Check out my description below to find out a link that I will share with you on exactly how to power pump. That has helped me and it also has helped other moms, so definitely give that a try. Check out the description also and I'll leave a link on how you can properly cluster pump. And these are two methods that definitely work for moms. It is meant to mimic the same rhythmic patterns that baby would. If you've ever heard of cluster feeding, then that is where cluster pumping comes in and you're mimicking with your pump what your baby would do. All right, guys, so those are all of the tips that I have for you today. I have so much more that I can speak about pumping. Pumping for over a year, I have definitely been through ups and downs and I've gone through many things. So I feel like I have a lot of experience in this area and I have a lot that I would love to share with other moms who may need help. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments if there's other videos that you are interested in seeing me speak about pumping. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. I will see you guys next time. Bye.